My name's Chris, and there's something I have to get off my chest. I am way too addicted to Rover SD1s. So for about the last three and a half years or so, my daily driver has been a Rover 2600 Vanden Pla automatic SD1. Um, I say three and a half years. It spent the last year and a half off the road waiting for some body repair and paintwork to be done. The first year of that was just me saving up money, because apparently I'm not good with that sort of thing. Uh, but it's just about to come out of the shop, and I figure to celebrate its imminent return. In fact, by the time this episode goes out, it's probably already in my hands and already being driven, which is a happy thought just to have stewing in my brain, really. Uh, but to celebrate that, I'm going to do a quick run-through of how I wound up in this ridiculous situation in the first place, because really no sensible person with a functioning brain in their head should ever be daily driving a Rover SD1. Now, the car's been on the show a few times before. We've done a kind of a stage zero service on it and some ignition work and a small brake renovation. But we might be accelerating a little bit. While I've been waiting for it to come out of the body shop, I've been getting a little bit carried away buying parts. And I've now got a whole set of rear louvers. I've got a turbocharger. I've got a turbo manifold. I've got an ECU. I've got some vented upgrade uh, brakes for the front. I've got a big new radiator. And I was just about to order a new electric water pump, and then I ran out of money because it's Christmas time. I think the addiction probably started while I was still an infant. My dad had a 2600 Series 1 that we called Smudge, um, and I think it kind of imprinted on me as, as a very, very young one. There's a photo of me sitting on my dad's lap, and in it my dad looks exactly like I look today. It's uncanny, absolutely incredible. And me sat there holding the steering wheel of the car, really loving life behind the wheel of an SD1. And it sort of got worse from there because Smudge, although I didn't really understand it or recognize it at the time, I think it got Dad wanting something better. So he had to escalate from there to the Twin Plenum Vitesse, which is the super rare, you know, Lotus tune. There's all sorts of, uh, of rumors about what was actually in those engines. But the gist is there was a limited edition homologation run of SD1s done for the Touring Car Championship that included, among various rumored other things, two throttle intakes, uh, tuned, uh, tuned ECU, different intake trumpet lengths in the chambers, things like that. Um, actual numbers, no one really seems to know. You ask four different people and you'll get six different answers for how much power they came out the factory with, but apparently they were good for anywhere from 30 to 50 horsepower over the regular EFI V8s, put them in the sort of low 200s, which for a car of its era, pretty brisk. And that was what my dad wanted. So after a few years um, of going through some pretty hard times as a family, he eventually managed to get into a slightly better career, and he did manage to eventually get his unicorn. He got a black twin plenum E-Reg Rover SD1, which he absolutely loved to bits. Um, we still have that, actually. That's the uh, that's E277 DPG, or animal, that's been in the family ever since. I think we've now actually had it for more than half of its total, total life. Uh, so that's my restoration project, because unfortunately it got parked up many, many years ago. It had a little bit of a rust hole that we couldn't fix at the time, and then that became a big rust hole, and then we patched it, and you know the usual kind of cycle of um, tin worm happened. So that's now become a much bigger restoration project involving a new shell and loads and loads of new parts. So I'm hopefully going to get to that once I've got my SD1 grumps sorted out a little bit more. So Animal was kind of dad's return to the SD1 world, and obviously what kind of introduced me to it as someone who had a you know functioning consciousness. Um, but there were a bunch of others in the family as well. So I think the next one that we got after Animal, I could be wrong, but I think it was Shaq, which was another twin plenum in bright red. There was a few other others in the family as well. We had uh, Shelley, which I think was a 2300 that we picked up for £10.50 on eBay because someone typoed the name and it got no bids. Um, there were a few others as well, but they were basically just parts cars and things like that, that that I can't really remember too many details of. Various other EFIs, Vanden Plas, things like that that we've had over the years. So yeah, SD1s have kind of been a feature of my life. I think since I, one when I was an infant, and then again since I was about 10 years old. Um, and I've always just, I've loved the weird instrument cluster and the weird dashboard. I've loved the um, definitely not a Ferrari Daytona design language on it. The big flat wedginess of it is has just always really appealed to me. and. Um, yeah, I think ever since it imprinted from an early age, I was doomed. I was always going to have at least one, and uh, I think I've set myself on a path to having maybe maybe more than one at this rate. So I'd been looking around for SD1s for quite a while, because although I have a Mark I Golf that I still need to restore, still need to do some engine work on, still need to get on the show at some point, the SD1's always been kind of my, my, my reasonable dream car, my attainable dream car. And I was idly poking around eBay one day, 
uh, we, the whole family were out having having dinner one time, and I just happened to look on eBay, and there was um, a really nice looking red, a Porto red Van den Pla for what I think I could fairly call a steal. It was about two and a half grand, I think, on auction at the time, and uh, I couldn't not. I scraped together every spare penny that I had. I maxed out every card I had. I did everything I could to try and get the money together. Borrowed a bunch of money from the parents as well. And uh, the next day we drove seven hours up to wherever it was. I think it was sort of Leeds area from Southwest Wales at the time to go pick it up. And I was basically in love at first sight. I jumped in it. Um, the transmission wasn't super great. The brakes were barely okay, but I didn't care. It was an FD1 and that was kind of all I wanted at the time. So I drove that home and it immediately basically proved itself to actually be a, an alarmingly reliable car. I don't think anyone expected it to be as good as it was for the most part. Yeah, it did develop a fun issue for a while where it had a habit of like spitting out brake caliper bolts from the front right wheel. Um, it was always the top bolt. And what would happen is it'd be completely fine if I'm driving forward as the wheel's turning that way and I hit the brakes and it holds the caliper in place. But if I'd ever reverse, it would push the caliper off of the rotor and clunk the inside of the wheel. So that was kind of annoying. I kept trying like Loctite and various other bits and pieces to try and hold the bolt in, but weirdly enough, nothing ever held. So that was that was frustrating for a long time. And then miraculously, one day the bolt just started staying in, and then life was good. Um, unfortunately, while it was doing that, it did actually snap a brake line completely one day, which um, was was quite a fun time for my brother who was driving at the time, when he was piling into a roundabout at forty mile an hour, went to slow down for it, and didn't which I'm led to believe is not a fun situation to be in. So after that, we pretty much immediately did a complete overhaul of the entire front brake system. We've got a new master cylinder in there. We've got new front rotors and calipers, which you've seen on the show. And touch wood, it's been fine ever since, or at least it was fine for the next six months until it went into the body shop, which is where it's been for quite a while now. It's having uh, both front outer wings replaced, both sills, um, a good chunk of the rear left uh, quarter panel, it's having the tow bar removed, it's having the Vitesse neoprene spoiler added, and it's having a new front shin installed. I think that pretty much wraps up everything that's being done in there. So that's, that's been a fair few months of work in the shop, on top of obviously all the time it took for me to save up for the work. Um, so I've got to say, all in, a pretty Herculean effort by Tommy Evans down in Brody, who's doing all the bodywork at the minute. It's been a big old road for him, and I hope he's looking forward to it finishing as much as I am, because I really want to get back behind the wheel. But also... I really want to get on with some of the other upgrades that we've got planned because now we're no longer just fixing some brakes and fixing some ignition. I want to go big now. Now the first thing I want to do is make sure the engine doesn't incinerate itself and make sure that I don't go careening into a field of sprouts the first time I hit a corner at high speed. So right behind me there, I've got a massive great big radiator. It's a custom job for an SD1. All the same form factor apart from being around about three times as thick. So hopefully loads and loads of cooling capacity there. And between that and a new electric water pump that I haven't ordered yet but need to, and I'll have that in the new year, we should be pretty much good for cooling, which is good because I'm targeting 300-ish horsepower with a little bit of help from a Holset HE221 turbocharger, which I got from some kind of lorry. So the turbo's going on the engine that I tore apart earlier this year. The engine is currently in the shop getting reworked and checked over, getting the crank reground and a few other bits and pieces because, man, it was toast. The crankshaft might be beefy, uh, but you can still score it if you run an engine drive oil. It doesn't matter how overbuilt it is, it doesn't care. Um, so hopefully once I get that back from the shop, I can sling the turbo manifold on it, hang the 221 off the side, and start making some boost. Now to make it all work, I've gone for an EFI system. I'm going to be running a semi-sequential fuel injection and spark using a set of throttle bodies off of a BMW E36 or E46 M3. The nice thing is these individual throttle bodies, you can get them for about four or five hundred quid on eBay secondhand. And they're perfect for the application. They're roughly the right bore spacing, so they fit the engine quite nicely. And the only thing I'll really need to do is get an adapter uh, made up to go from my cylinder head to the E46 uh, throttle bodies. Everything after that, I can use normal aftermarket E46 boosty bits. So hopefully that should be a bit spendy, which I'm not really super keen on. I'd like to try and keep the cost down so that I can do more other stuff as well, but it'll at least be easy. There's off the shelf stuff that I can use. And of course, slightly more boring, but with 300 horsepower under the hood, assuming the transmission holds together, I'm just gonna pretend that's not gonna be a problem. I'll also need to make the car stop. So I've got an upgraded set of Vitesse vented uh, front brakes to throw on, which hopefully will actually be able to shed out some of the heat that I'll be putting into them on track. It's not really a heavy track car, 
but it would be nice to take it to Landau or Abingdon or whatever and spank it around a bit. And that pretty much is everything I've got planned for 2021. Yeah. Other bits and pieces might pop up depending on what parts yeah. I find for cheap, but I think we're pretty much good. Thanks very much for watching another episode of Storytime. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show, you can buy t-shirts, mugs, hats, and more. If you'd like to support us on our builds more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow, and you can sponsor us from as little as a dollar a month. Every little bit does help, and we really appreciate all the help of our patrons. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Check out shop.pedalbox.show for mugs, t-shirts, and hats. Oh.